All right, hello and welcome to the DevStream 92 Breakdown. Uh, so, we didn't get a huge amount besides Harrow on this dev stream, which is pretty unfortunate because lots of things were brought up, but just not necessarily answered. Uh, but, first up, we did see a new Grenier unit, who is kind of a, kind of a, a big fucking weirdo. He uses this, which is a gas minigun, as it was described, which is strange. But it looks cool, so I guess that's good. On the other hand, this is the guy who is really fucking weird. Like, he looks very strange. Apparently, the gas in that weapon that he's going to be using is going to also, like, go into his helmet and have, like, it's what's melting his face. And I... He's a weird unit. I... I like, he looks... Just so strange, and I, I, didn't, like, he didn't, I didn't even think he was Grenier whenever they first showed him. I was like, I didn't know what the fuck to think, because he's big fucking weirdo. But I guess that's fine, because all the Greniers are kind of weirdos. So, there's that, I guess. Uh, and then beyond that, uh, they were talking about MOAs as pets, because of uh, the Ambulos rework, and how fucking dope Ambulos is. And they said, potentially, so that was good. Uh, maybe we'll get robo pets or, or other robo pets that are not flying ones, land-based robo pets. Uh, and then they talked about vacuum without saying much. And the main thing that we got out of it is, is what I have right there, which is we wish the solution wasn't to just make everything the same, which is weird. I I don't. I mean. That has worked constantly in the past for Warframe, is to make everything the same and good. Like, to make everything the same good thing has gone pretty well for Warframe so far, such as Endo, which, like, really cleared up a lot of that stuff and made it all really consistent across everything in the game, and all the same. And Parkour, which is pretty much exactly the same on all Warframes, with, like, one, maybe two exceptions to that rule. And various other things, like the amount of like mod slots Warframes have. All I'm saying is that consistency is not exactly a bad thing. So like, the solution being to make everything the same is kind of a, a good one. That's a that's a good solution to have because the difficult solution is to make a bunch of different things that are maybe not as good as just the simple solution. So I don't know. Like, I, I understand the want to, like, make, like, this big varied thing, but I feel like DE does, like, a big varied thing, and, like, the big varied thing that they do are usually quests, and those are awesome when those are, like, different and cool, but gameplay mechanics are usually pretty uniform across many different things, like, the guns are pretty much the same a lot of the time, with some, like, little mix-ups here and there. And melee is pretty much the same across the board. It's just got different weapon types that have different ranges. Like, everything's pretty similar. A lot of, like, the really, really good things in Warframe are almost the same thing with, like, little tiny tweaks on it. So if they really wanted to mix up how players interact with Vacuum, they could go, like, the 20 steps beyond Universal Vacuum and, like, let people customize exactly what they're picking up and what they're not with Vacuum. If they really wanted to make it different and customizable i just don't think the community like i'm sure the community would like that if they gave us universal vacuum on warframes with complete co like control over what gets vacuumed up and what doesn't i'm sure that would be awesome we'd all really appreciate that but i also don't think the community like really wants them to work on it that much like for it just to be a simple solution i think is fine for pretty much everybody uh but let's not Dwell on that, I guess. Uh, they also, uh, they showed this in a tweet before the dev stream, so we already knew about it. Uh, but they showed that separate Cyan Donna and armor customization is coming, so that's fantastic. That's just purely better for more customization and better fashion frame. I cannot wait for that. That will be really awesome when it comes. Uh, and then they showed off Squad Captura, so basically what you're going to get is a squad that can go into capture mode and take fucking awesome images and pictures and do whatever you want, have like a big clan photo or whatever you want to do. Uh, so that'll be really fun. Host controls time. Everyone else has their own camera and their own filters and all that stuff, which is cool. 
Uh, and that stuff seems like it'll be nice. Uh, beyond that, we got some details on the dual wielding. So they're shipping with just the glaive and pistols first, which makes sense. A little test run to get it in there. Um, there are going to be charge attacks in midair, which means throwing the glaive in the glaive's case. Uh, and many weapons are going to be compatible in the future. They mentioned scythes uh, and many other melee weapons that are going to have this, which is kind of cool. And they said that sword and shields will get a similar system, which I hope would mean that you would have like shield and gun, because that could potentially be very effective. Being able to block while you're firing would be really, really strong for obvious reasons. Uh, so that might be really cool. Uh, they showed chat filters, so that is going to apply to any chat you want. So you're going to be able to filter any chat, which will be really nice for recruiting. Uh, it's not going to be restricted to only trade chat, which is nice. Uh, and then we come to kind of like the big actual info dump, because they dodged questions about ribbons and various other things for a while. Uh, but we got the Harrow details, and there's quite a lot here. Uh, so it's worth noting that not all of this stuff that I have here in the notes uh, was shown on the dev stream, and... Rebecca has written up a thing with the further details that are actually very, very important to how I'm viewing Harrow. Very specifically, the detail that was added to his one that wasn't made clear on the dev stream. Uh, so anyway, his passive is that he's got a double overshield cap, which is going to be pretty important. Uh, he's coming with a pistol that has combo effects for headshots, so it's basically going to be a pistol that has the properties of a sniper... Which basically means, to me, that snipers will become even more irrelevant. So, I guess that's fine. We'll have uh, we'll have an actual sniper secondary, as opposed to just using the Lex for that. Uh, so, that's kind of awesome, I guess. Uh, I don't know where that leaves snipers, which is kind of sad, but it'll be what it'll be. Uh, and then his first power is a chain wave stun. So, what that does is basically he sends out his little um, chain thing across the ground. It's like a big energy wave, and all the enemies are like the fucking arms fucking flayed across. Here's my fucking head. Shoot me in the goddamn face. Like, that's exactly what every enemy they hit with it did, um, which is pretty solid just in that. A good stun with a long range that makes it so that enemies want to be shot right in their goddamn face. Pretty good, just at face value, but while enemies are under that effect, you also get shields when you hit the enemy. What's not clear is whether or not that hit has to be a headshot, but I suspect it might be. Uh, so, that's really, really good. Uh, that seems like it'll be a fantastic one power, among the best, for sure. His two is interesting, but I don't know exactly how well it'll play out. It kind of depends what the upper limit of, like, the power strength might be able to give you with it, in that you sacrifice all of your shields for reload speed and a fire rate buff. Uh, so, when you do that, the duration of this buff is based on how many shields you get rid of, which is important because it means that you're not going to need very, very high duration to make use of this. Because the amount of shields you sacrifice is correlating to that, not your duration amount. So, that's good. Uh, that that is decoupled and you can focus on some other stuff. Uh, its range is also based on affinity range, so your range is not going to be super important for helping your team, because that is a nice 50 meter AoE, just like Trinity has for her blessing now. Uh, that being uniform is really, really cool, and I appreciate that. Uh, it also heals teammates based on the damage that you're dealing. Uh, so that will be kind of nice just to have like a decent heal along with um, giving yourself like a good buff. So you'll just be healing while you've got yourself buffed, which is solid enough as it as it stands. It's pretty okay. Uh, it's just kind of an extra. Now his three is the point where I don't think his three is a very good ability. So you have to stop and swing your thing. Your, I don't know what it's called. Your like little incense like chain thing around. You just swing it around for a while and charge it up with your energy, like putting it into it. And then you leave it and you get an aura where if you get Headshot kills, you get energy back? The range on that's not clear if that's affinity range. If it is, that's a, like a good range for it. It'd be nice for that to be decoupled. Uh, and it only gives energy on headshot kill, though. So the problem with only giving energy on headshot kill is that means that you have to stop, charge it up, set it down, and then get headshot kills only to get energy back. Which seems really rough. If you didn't, if you could like move while charging it, that might be like fine. Like, okay, sure, headshot kills. Okay, fair enough. Um, but the, the main problem I see with that is that like stopping and charging it is an easy way to die. 
and the energy gain doesn't seem that good as opposed to like pretty much anything else uh if it was per headshot i could definitely see a reason for this um to, to like have like force you into that weak position where you have to stop charge it up dump a bunch of energy into it set it down and then like get a bunch of headshots and like generate a bunch of armor or not armor uh energy and your teammates also get that benefit of being able to generate a bunch of energy for themselves that would be really cool i just don't know if that's going to be strong enough as a three for it to be only on kill in lower levels that might be fine but in higher levels i see that being pretty weak uh so we'll see how that goes the three is the only power i'm really worried about the other stuff seems pretty good uh which brings us to his four so his four has two phases first phase you're invulnerable which is for a short duration uh, and then the phase two is that based on how much damage you eat during phase one while you're invulnerable, like Valkyr would get hit while she's invincible, um, that instead of killing you, uh, turns into a buff for critical chance on headshots. Uh, the thing that's confusing about that is that they said that it's also going to, you're going to get like a damage bonus increase, but they said critical chance, not critical damage. So it's actually not completely clear what exactly you're getting as the buff from that but it said critical chance and the thing that rebecca put up but it also said more damage so it's kind of weird exactly what buff we're getting out of that but that seems pretty reasonable and you can't recast this ability until phase two is over uh the one thing that i'm slightly worried about with power four is that how much invulnerability to the rest of the buff time do you have like are you getting invulnerability for like five seconds and then you've got like a 45 second buff because that is probably not that useful in the grand scheme of things like having a five second invulnerability is really not that long and then it like having to time that for like a mm, I don't know if it's only critical chance i don't think that that's going to be particularly great uh, unless it's unless the buff that it gives is enormous even with just like a relatively small amount of damage taken like maybe a thousand uh so it's interesting but yeah pretty good stuff all around of what they would actually talk about so there's that arrow looks like he can potentially be very good like i said though his three is the thing that i'm worried about um that i think might just not be worth using uh but his one his one and two seem like they're fantastic one and two seem like perfect like hit the nail on the head in terms of that stuff um it's just yeah like slight things with three and four worry me but otherwise it seems pretty good overall so yeah Devstream 92, I really wish that we got more discussion on vacuum, ribbons, etc., etc. Uh, many things, like, they, like, hushed breath, talked about a token system for sorties that they weren't supposed to talk about it, which it's probably means that it's just never happening, so. <sighs> just some, like, underlying disappointing stuff with a bunch of good news, but the disappointing stuff is, like really disappointing specifically the vacuum stuff because I, I feel like the solution of making everything the same is a good solution and coming up with a more complicated solution is sometimes just not required like simple solutions are good in like pretty much all cases so but yeah that's devstream 92 i'm gonna be streaming today for anyone who's wondering uh it'll be on probably pretty much right after this goes up so if you're seeing this i'm probably live uh, and, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow.